Good morning, everyone. We are officially on the lease pasture, the very overgrown, very mature lease pasture, but the cows still seem to be getting along really, really well. This morning was actually the first morning when I came out that they, uh, they were mooing at me, bawling at me, and I think most of that had to do with the fact that we got a ton of rain yesterday. I mean, we're three plus inches over the course of the day and they're just getting one move a day and they had gotten that move right before the, uh, the bulk of the rain. I thought it was done for the day, so I came out and moved them and then it just poured for hours. So, you know, when it, uh, when it rains like that, when it's really wet, they tend to really trample down forage a lot more it's not necessarily wasting it you know anymore you can see there's still a lot left standing here but just with it being soaking wet like that they they tend to smash more of it down so i think they didn't get as much to eat yesterday as they could have had it been dry so they were a little upset with me this morning but we're gonna get them moved and make them happy ready mama Man, they sure do like whatever's down there. Oh, it's, uh, we had this last year out here about this time. Obviously they're going for some of the chicory with the purple flowers there. They're definitely going for the chicory like always, but Mac, it's um, some sort of artichoke. It's like a family of sunflower. Uh, I cannot remember the actual name for it, but it's something, something artichoke. Like I said, it's it's basically a version of a, like a wild, a different version of a sunflower. So it only grows along this fence line here. They absolutely love it. They all came sprinting down here as soon as they could. And you can see Max kind of blocked everyone out so he can get it. <laughs> um, that brings up a good point. You know, even though this stuff is super mature and a lot of it is, you know, overgrown and, and kind of stemmy and woody, I mean, look at what she's eating. There's a lot of, there's a lot of viney type plants, a lot of broad leaves that the cows are absolutely attacking that they obviously enjoy that would not be here or would not be at this stage had I come out and moan, mowed, 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 mowed. Uh, this didn't, I didn't mow at all this year yet. So normally in the years past, because I know I don't get out here until late summer, I try and get out here once in the late spring and mow it down to keep it all from getting this mature and stemmy. This is some really, I think it's a it's a type of hay grass. It's usually planted for hay because it, it doesn't go to seed very quickly. You know, again, this stuff hasn't been, it's August 3rd and this stuff hasn't been touched at all. And it still hasn't put out a seed head. It's very green, very palatable the stems on it are extremely long so it can grow up really really high and kind of get those leaf blades past a lot of the taller stuff um, so they take you know the top the top third of the plant top half of the plant is all leaves it grows back very slowly you know it's not going to be anywhere near this if they come back around here late this fall but it provides a lot of good nutrition a lot of high grazing you know, those high energy tips, um, keeping their head up and away from any sort of parasites that usually hang out on the bottom third of the plant that sometimes certain grass species they have to actually get down to. You know, it's short enough that the bottom third of the plant is also palatable leaf blade so they can re-ingest parasites because this grass species leaf blade is so tall only the top third of the plant. They really aren't re-ingesting any sort of parasites. So it's definitely a, a nice healthy grass for them to be grazing. Wish I knew what it was. So I just used the app on my phone. It's Smooth Brome, which sounds familiar. I think I do remember looking that up last year, but for some reason, what I had originally thought the first year we were out here, it was something completely different. But, you know, you can see the the difference here. Obviously my, my fence line was right here, um, what they have been on yesterday and what they're on now. 
anyway, the point I was trying to make is, you know, my first couple years running cattle, I would have been absolutely terrified to turn them out into a pasture like this. I would have thought, no way they're going to get enough to eat. No way they're going to get the nutrients that they need. You know, I'd have to supplement with a bunch of protein and energy. And um, that's just not the case. You know, over the years, I've realized that the cows really, really love different forages. Obviously, diversity is the key, especially when it comes to pasture health, soil health, and ultimately your, you know, your cattle health. There's a lot of different nutrients that these different types of forages are, are providing the cattle. And a lot of this stuff even has medicinal properties. You know, it, it, it never ceases to amaze me that just randomly certain times throughout the growing season, my mineral consumption, my salt consumption, my, um, you know, store-bought energy in the form of dried molasses, that consumption goes up and it goes down. It, it fluctuates throughout the year. And, and that is entirely dependent on what the cattle have been eating. If they're on a monoculture of grass or, you know, just a couple species of grass, maybe some clover, they're obviously not getting everything they need. And it seems like when they get turned out onto certain pastures that have a lot more diversity, um, are at a different growth stage, a later growth stage than what they are normally grazing at. It just seems that a lot of those external inputs are not needed anymore. The cattle hardly go through any mineral. They hardly go through any salt, any sort of sugar or energy, you know? So um, I guess, you know, I would never be afraid to graze cattle on over mature, quote unquote, you know, rank pastures. You always read about trying to keep that grass and its growth curve you know, three leaf blade, four leaf blade, get it in stage two, the boot stage, before it starts to throw up a seed head. And I'm not denying that that is highly nutritious for the cattle and that they are getting a lot of protein, a lot of energy, putting on a lot of pounds with grass in that stage. But that doesn't mean that this stuff is not beneficial to them either. And again, that they're not, you know, there's medicinal properties to a lot of this stuff, a lot of these different types of forages that they are, that they're getting. So I would never be afraid to turn cows out onto an old rank pasture like this. Not to mention, you know, it's just, it's better for the environment. It's better for mother nature. This stuff is a great example. This is wild burgot or uh, bee balm, it's called. Great for pollinators, great for bird species, particular, particularly uh, in the winter when this stuff puts out really high protein seeds that the birds absolutely need to, to make it through winter. But, you know, yeah, this stuff is on a fence line, but this bee balm, um, or horse mint as it's called also, you know, is, is throughout this whole pasture. And so it's feeding the, the insects, it's feeding the birds, and it never would have been allowed to go to flower and grow had I been out here in late spring and mowed this all down to you know four inches just to keep everything all the grass vegetative so we're just doing a strip a day the cows are going to march through this this least pasture and then there's a another pasture out behind those trees that is far more overgrown than this um, we're gonna strip graze them through that hopefully for the rest of the year and into as late fall as i can so then everything that I've got at home, my perennial cool season pastures at home, hopefully are recovering and I'll be able to graze them, you know, October, November, December, before I have to start feeding hay. I'm gonna finish setting up fence here, refill my fly traps, my little solar fly traps, top off water, and then I'll be back with you guys when I'm back home on that planted annual field. Okay, welcome back. Uh, as you can see, it looks like this field hardly had been touched. And, um, well, there's two reasons for that. One, the cows have been off of this for about two weeks, two and a half weeks. And we've had some really good growing weather. A lot of what they had been eating has kind of grown, grown back a little bit. But what I hope you can see, what I hope you can notice is that so much of the really big leafy tropical 
type species, the warm season species that I planted, uh, I mean, they haven't been touched. They were hardly touched at all. And most of what you're seeing, actually pretty much everything of what you're seeing is sorghum Sudan. And you can see some of it's kind of starting to go to seed. Uh, so we've got, you know, this little seed head up there. You can see this, these two seed heads swaying in the background there. So sorghum Sudan, just like any other kind of sorghum puts out a seed head that, you know, could be harvested uh, by machinery. But the whole idea is that you are grazing this stuff before it ever gets to that point. I greatly underestimated a, the amount of forage that was actually finally going to pop up. You know, it felt like it took a while for this stuff to really kind of kick into gear and start growing. So as I was planning out my rotations before the cows came in here, I really honestly did not think that I was going to get hardly any grazing days out of this because it just seemed like up until about two and a half, three weeks before the cows went in, man, nothing just seemed to really be growing. There was so much space. You know, when you'd walk through this field, there was a lot of bare bare ground that you could see between these plants. So that on top of the fact that I really thought the cows were just going to seriously walk right in here and go after this big leafy stuff, which uh, I'll get to that in a second, you know, why why this this also was a failed attempt. Um, but they, they didn't, you know, they absolutely loved going for, you can kind of see it, um, a lot of grasses. Now there was some annual ryegrass, there was some Timothy, and there was some I believe it was Johnson grass that I planted in here. And that stuff being very young, very palatable, uh, I was amazed how much of the actual, you know, warm season planted annual species that I put in here that the cows just straight up ignored. You know, this foxtail, before it started actually putting out its fox tail, had a lot of really good uh, big leaves, you know, broad leaves. And the cows absolutely loved the foxtail. Like I said, they were going after the Johnson grass. They were going after the annual rye grass. They just, they were totally digging on the grass species and they were leaving a lot of the radishes, the Sudan, a very little bit of corn that came up. And again, I'll, I'll talk about that. Um, the sun hemp, which you'll see here, really didn't start popping until the cows came off of here and i'd be curious to know if they were to, if they were to eat this now because it does have quite the stem on it the leaves are nice and green but um you know i thought they were going to kill the sun hemp because they like that hemp type plant uh they just man they just didn't touch anything other than the grasses so that was mistake number one just looking at the big annual plants that I could recognize and think that that was all that I had to graze. So like looking at these plants right in front of me here, this Johnson grass, this sorghum sedan grass, and at the time what I thought was my BMR grazing corn, just looking at that and thinking that that's all the cows were going to eat. At the time I was like, yeah, I'm getting, I'm getting, you know, a week max out of this because I just assumed they were going to kill all that stuff, eat it all down and then be be done um i didn't i didn't anticipate them going for the grasses first mistake number two don't forget that dexter cows really don't eat a whole lot and only having three lactating females and a couple of young growing yearlings um they just don't eat a whole lot and so again i was looking at this at this two acre field thinking uh they were going to fly through it. They were going to eat so much because I was so used to seeing how much they take down on a cool season perennial pasture when they're turned out on it at, you know, uh, anywhere from six to 12 inch grazing height on those cool season forages, looking at how much of that they take down in a very small area. I mean, again, we're talking, we're talking 4,000 square feet versus two acres. I just, I underestimated the amount that the cows were going to be eating and that, again, the, the amount that I had here um, in this pasture. And mistake number three, this is not corn. It looks like earless, cobless corn. It's actually sorghum Sudan. Um, this stuff is extremely dark green right now because it. I'm actually standing in an area that uh, I had burnt 
a lot of brush when I first cleaned up this pasture before I put the cows on here. I had a big old brush pile that I burnt here. And, and I remember something, on the, if anyone can clear this up, that'd be great. But I remember something along the lines of wood ash acting similar to lime on soil pH. So this is a pretty good indicator right here that um, I think, you know, this pasture could uh, stand to have some lime put on it. But um, I know that they love grazing corn. I have planted it just little bits before and I suppose maybe they absolutely love grazing corn because it was the middle of summer and the cool season forages did not taste good so they went for the corn but um, when all this stuff was coming up like I said I thought that this was corn you know early stages of BMR corn I thought at any minute it was going to start tasseling it was going to start putting out a little a little corn cob it never did and the more identification I started doing as it started to get taller the more I realized that it was sorghum sudan now, they supposedly love sorghum Sudan. They started to eat it towards the last few days of them grazing this pasture after they had really gone gone through and knocked out a lot of those those high leaf grasses. Um, but uh, it just, it was not their favorite right away. And I guess I didn't anticipate that. So lesson number three, maybe don't have so much sorghum Sudan in this mix, because as you can see, this is a S ton of sorghum Sudan and I just don't think that broadcast broadcast seeding with minimal soil incorporation maybe even with soil incorporation for corn is gonna work I'm gonna have to spend the winter looking for a corn planter if I want to try and plant corn next year that's it guys. If you have any questions, um, you know, let me know like always questions, comments, concerns, sarcastic remarks, uh, leave them down below. Uh, I, man, I'll take any advice, any advice you all have for me. If anyone's done this before, I know there's a ton of resources out there. And, and like I said, I'm definitely going to spend this winter, um, looking through a lot of that stuff again, double checking everything, kind of see if I can figure out where I went wrong with some of this stuff. But, um, yeah, any, any hints, tips, tricks, whatever. Leave them down below and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.